Our preseason has been exciting so far. Um, we're in week two of official practice and our staff is pretty pleased with the direction it's going and growing. There's a higher IQ level. There's just an energy that, that we hadn't seen in the past. We feel like looking at the talent and the skill sets on the floor, we've got a lot of, a lot of room to be great. You build on some of the success that you achieved last season. We build on the past success by focusing on future successes. And um, it's just daily habits of uh, conditioning the minds of the players to be great. We're setting goals on a daily basis of uh, minimal turnovers. And that's something that statistically last year we weren't very good at. I think we've averaged probably 19 or so. We set goals every day and run accordingly or speak about it accordingly when we don't meet those goals of turnovers. Um, spacing's key, so we stop um, more frequently with corrections and, and teaching because we have a pretty young group. Um, we've got five freshmen and we have to make sure that we're teaching the things that we want them to do and we're not just operating on expectations of what they've learned in the past. So. Um, a lot more teaching, a lot more individual sessions, and we have a group of excited young ladies who ask questions, and they're not afraid to watch film. Um, they're not afraid to be criticized, and they're not defensive, you know, when we're helping correct them in areas that can help them be better. So um, in, that, in that essence, it's, it's fun to work with them. It takes about two or three years to, to change a culture. This is about to be year three for you. Are you seeing a, a culture change and trending in the right direction is, is what you want to see? I would definitely say so. Year three, year three, that's all I've been hearing. It's year three for you, huh? And, and yes, and I'm kind of understanding now why people say that. The culture has definitely shifted. Um, shifted in the direction that definitely we want it to go. Positivity, energetic, um, players that have a high, uh, high expectations for themselves. And they have the definite confidence and belief in in their abilities, knowing that they can pour into where we're going. So the year three thing is real. I do see um, the culture changing in, a, in the sense of, we've got players that love to be in the gym and want to be in the gym, um, not on demand, but just um, on their own. I mean, not just in the gym for social reasons, but to actually work on, um, work on their games and get better. Um, and there's more of that, way more of that than I've ever seen here since I've been at Central. And uh, it's just breeding grounds for, for nothing but, I mean, championship mentalities. I mean, we've got players now that are accustomed to winning on their high school levels or AAU levels and um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, not just the summer, not just um, high school past games, but like in our competitive situations, you know, they expect to win and they're doing what needs to be done on both sides of the ball to win games. And um, that, that's a fun thing to see as a coaching staff. You want to talk, let's talk about the past and last year, but one question about last year, that, yeah. that MEAC, champion, MEAC tournament win was the first one in, in, in history since they'd been mm -hmm. in the MEAC. How big was that? How, how big of a catapult was that going into this year for the team? And it was huge. It was huge for history's sake and as a reflection of and a teaching point. But I think that's something that the coaches, the coaches and I have, we expect it. I mean, we have to come in with a certain air and certain expectation of things. And uh, we knew it'd come. We knew it would come. Um, I think it came in dramatic fashion. I mean, it was just, I can, I can reminisce on that situation, that game in the MEAC tournament. And uh, we were excited to do it, expected it, but yet it was stunning um, because to hear, you know, my administrator come in and say, hey, you know, this is, and remind us the first tournament win ever. Um, it was pretty surreal. As I use it now, I mean, now I've got a group of kids that expect it because they had a taste of it. I've got some winners in um, and some experience now. And there's nothing on the agenda but to do better than we did uh, the past season. And yeah, it, it catapults us to uh, a different and higher expectation level now um, and a more realistic viewpoint now. It's done before and we can now focus more on that time of year, kind of gauge 
how we are, measure ourselves, and understand that that's the climax and that's the peak where we should be playing our best basketball. Talked about how things have changed over the past three years. Um, have you changed as a coach during that time? And if so, how? Um, that's a great question. I think I've grown. Um, become a little more focused on the specific needs of my team. And team changes. Teams change from year to year. Uh, philosophically, I don't think I've changed. Uh, the expectation of TSO basketball transition stops and offense hasn't changed. Um, I've become more passionate about it because now I have players and student athletes in my system that can truly pour into the system and the philosophy of transition basketball, getting stops on defense and uh, being offensive threats. So now I'm even more excited about uh, the philosophy that we as a staff has brought in here to North Carolina Central. Um, I think I've also changed in the essence, in the sense of my demands. Um, I don't have to settle. I don't expect my players to settle and, and I'm gonna keep the bar high. I won't lower the bar. Uh, I'll provide provisions of how to get over the bar, different options of it, but the bar doesn't get lowered. The standard remains the same. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.